Hi, I wanted to leave a last message. My name is Sue Mueller, and forgive me, I'm using an old laptop if the timing is off from the movement on the audiovisual. You might want to look at <laughs> something else because that kind of drives me crazy. I wanted to leave a little bit of a note um, for whenever the rapture happens for those left behind. I don't know if you people in the United States of America know these things. Um, did you know Bibles used to be issued to our military? I have the reading by um, Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, and in an old Bible of what was what was said. As commander in chief, I take pleasure in commending the reading of the Bible to all her, who serve in the armed forces in the United States throughout the centuries, men of Many faiths and diverse origins have found in the sacred book words of wisdom, counsel, and inspiration. It is a foundation of strength and now, as always, an aid in attaining the highest aspirations of the human soul. Our Constitution was set up to protect the church from being run by the state were pro-freedom of speech. It was to protect people being able to worship the way they wanted. That's why the people in the Mayflower came over. And this is the Mayflower flower Compact. Having undertaken the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith in honor of our king, country, and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one of another, covenant and combine ourselves together in the civil body politic for our better ordering of preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid. Schools were set up in order to teach children how to read the scripture. How far we have fallen. Public um, schools used to have this prayer in until I believe it was 1963. And if you look at the single unwedded mother birth rate and all the ways our country fell apart after this was removed, You'll see why. Can you imagine going to school every morning and praying together? Our Father, oh, excuse me, Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee, and we beg thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. Our broadcasting stations. Before many TV programs were made, they used to end at midnight and sign off with the Lord's Prayer, which is, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive um, our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. When Gone with the Wind came out, Boston rejected the movie because it had a swear word in it. How far we have fallen. I have met people that have thought they have sinned too much to be forgiven. Be careful of that lie. Be careful of that lie. I have been taught the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is when the Holy Spirit come and con comes and convicts you of what you did wrong and convicts you of what you did wrong, but you don't want to hear it and you reject it and you don't want to hear it and you shut down the Holy Spirit. Christ never forced anyone to worship him and serve him. 
Some religions force you. Christ invites you. He loves you. Maybe, maybe you've been a militant homosexual. Maybe you've been in the occult. John Todd has YouTube tapes on um, testimonies on YouTube. He was born into a witchcraft family. He explains what's going on in that world. He came to Christ. William Schnabelin. He has a ministry called In In One Accord. He shares his testimony. He'd gotten into um, the Catholic Church so deep and Satanism. The Catholic Church does not teach the good news that salvation is a gift. He um, ended up being a vampire. And his testimony of coming to Christ is incredible. So, even the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, claimed that he was the chief of sinners. I've made a mess of my life in a lot of ways. The Lord has always been there to correct and guide and help me. Repenting is turning the other way, turning a 180, agreeing with God that what you did was wrong. Satan will throw at you who you are is wrong and worthless. But Jesus always points out it's what you did. Christ followers was the term first used after Christ came and people decided to follow him. So a lot of today, times today people think they're Christians, but they don't follow Christ. They don't follow his ways. The scripture tells us those who love the Lord obey him. So maybe you're here and you've realized you've never really understood what fearing the Lord means. Our newspapers used to describe in print, this is a God-fearing man. Um, that term is not held up like that anymore. Except in scripture, which never changes. So I think a good dose of the fear of the Lord can be a very helpful thing to help you change your mind and change your direction. God is into do-overs, into second chances. If you've got concern about your salvation, that means you have a conscience. If you're completely not concerned anymore, that's when you're in trouble. But I would encourage you to go beg forgiveness. Go to others you've sinned with. Ask them for forgiveness. Um, and God. He loves you, and no matter what you're going to have to go through, it'll be worth it to be right with God. It'll be worth it to be right with God. 23 Minutes in Hell is a testimony on YouTube you might want to look at. Um, Bill Weiss, I believe is his name, had a vision. And he couldn't even describe how bad it was just like scripture says you have to be careful when people have visions and dreams to match it up to scripture because the enemy will try to fool you over and over in the end days Christ's warning about the end days was do not be deceived do not be deceived so pray to help you not be deceived and uh, there's a movie called Sheffy, S-H-E-F-F-E-Y by Bob Jones University. That is on YouTube. Imagine growing up in his day. He was on fire for the Lord. He was a circuit riding preacher that had no problem with pronouncing God's message clearly and boldly and sternly warning people you need Jesus. You really do. Wake up. You really need him. 
another movie, Flame in the Wind by Bob Jones University is a really good movie to um, encourage you if you're going to have to face persecution. A young man is growing up and he gets involved in, this is about the Inquisition, in the Catholic Church. And he starts seeing what they're teaching versus what the scripture says. And he has to make a choice of which way he's going to go. You always want to go with scripture. Um, my favorite Christian movie is called Second Glance. G-L-A-N-C-E. And that is on YouTube also. Hopefully it's still available. Um, it's a really good picture that walking with the Lord is tremendously better than anything the world can offer. Time Changer with Gavin McLeod and David Morris, I believe. I know Gavin McLeod is in it. Time Changer is a good one too on YouTube. It is a man living in the late 1800s who gets to come into the year 2000. He can't believe the moral decline. I'm sure the people that lived earlier than late 1800s couldn't believe the moral decline by then. If a couple was caught having intercourse before marriage, stoning them to death was what was called for. And their parents were the ones who had to bring them in for that procedure to happen. That's why it is so important to teach your children the right way because you don't ever want to have to do that with your kids. Now, God was trying to keep the people protected from sin. He doesn't want to see us have our hearts broken. He doesn't want to see us get into situations um, where we're even tempted to murder our own children, um, which is something he forgives too. But you got to realize what the truth is and what you did if that was something you got involved in. Uh, make it right with God and you can meet those children. Yep, make it right with God and you can meet those children. Uh, God loves you. He really does. Will you believe it? Get yourself a Bible. Learn, learn what God's ways are. The Hebrew people, their journey from being slaves in Egypt to conquering war, warriors in the promised land. That's a really good comparison to our Christian walk. We come to Christ, we commit our lives to him, we receive his forgiveness, and we are set free from the bondage of sin. That means now we have a way to overcome sin. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Uh, so quick aside, Nancy Missler in her BE Transformed Bible Study explained that one of the definitions of our word mind our surrender to Jesus Christ is to imagine yourself like a horse has two bridles, to imagine yourself with the one bridle being the Holy Spirit and the other bridle being the Word of God. How sensitive are you to listening to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God? Have you been broken? Have you surrendered yourself to His guiding and leading? Faith is trusting in Hebrews it says faith is first believing God is and then believing he is good when you believe that you're going to want his leadership in your life when you know he's there to protect you he's not only there to keep you out of hell into heaven he's there to help you on the way and the back to the story of the people fleeing 
as slaves from Egypt. You can see their wandering through the wilderness and all the lessons that they had to learn as they went through the wilderness and they couldn't go on until they learned a certain lesson and had to go on more. Um, boy, those lessons are something we can relate to. Scripture says everything that is written is written for our learning. One of the lessons that really hit me between the eyes when I was going through a rough time is that they had complained against God Excuse me. in the wilderness. And you wouldn't think maybe that to be such a sin, but the Lord does. He, he um, expected some faith when they came into a situation was that was too big for them. They were afraid and got afraid you know, complaint. Well, I remember thinking, well, what else are you supposed to do when you get into a situation that's too hard for you? And the lesson really helped me. Um, God's been working in your life. You've been born again. You've committed your life to him. He expects you to have a little faith when a situation comes up. And instead of jumping to fear to go to him and say, okay, God, here's a situation. I need some help. I'm trusting you. I'm believing on you that you can help. Patiently waiting on him with expectation. Doors open. We live in a spiritual world. Um, I believe people are going to see a lot of miracles during the tribulation. I, I heard a lady that had a vision of a family that had no food. They sat down at the table and they started praising God for the food and it would come just like the manna in the wilderness came. There's a lot of power in praising the Lord. One of my favorite scriptures, feed on God's faithfulness. If you're familiar with the events in the Bible, like Joseph in Genesis, his 11 brothers sold him. He had to go through a lot of really difficult things, but he stayed faithful to God. He got sold into slavery and then he got sold. Um, he got accused of sin, of adultery, and he was innocent, but he was thrown in prison and he stayed faithful to God. I'm sure he wrestled with discouragement, but he encouraged himself in the Lord and he um, was lifted up from prisoner to second in command in a day. Um, excuse me, the bell's dropped on the floor. Which reminds me of another verse that helped me when I was really depressed because I hadn't been focusing on my first love. As I shared another time when I got saved, I thought just avoiding hell and going to heaven was the point. I had no idea of what keeping my first love meant and trusting the Lord for myself. And that was really the only time then I actually had something to say that was put in such a way that others might glean and help from it because I'd actually um, wasn't lifting myself up. I was lifting up what Christ was doing for me. But one of the times I was really struggling, I was challenged with a verse about King David it says, he encouraged himself in the Lord. How able are you to pick up a Bible and find what you need to encourage yourself in the Lord? That's a challenge I will give you. God makes many, many precious promises. Many times in scripture, he says, if, and he sets choices before us. If you do this, then I'll do that. And he's offering, he, he leaves the decision to us to follow and it's an invitation to trust that he is and that he is good that is the question god bless you keep on trusting hang in there with jesus those who endure to the end shall be saved